Wait, no. More than one second. Nope, that's it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> else take their test back? Thanks. Here we got theirs back. Okay. Ohama, did you want that? Did you want that? Did you get that? Yeah. Oh, you have a copy? Okay. I have two. Okay. All right. Um, chapter eight. So here, here's the idea. And let me show you something kind of silly. Um, we didn't really talk about it. This is chapter twelve. But you all know what the square root, like what the square root of nine would be. Three. Three. Now, now if I had. Um, so square root of 9 is 3, because the idea of a square root is, what does it take 2 of to multiply to make the thing inside, right? So cube root would be, what does it take 3 of to multiply the thing inside? So cube root would be, uh, like cube root of 8, what does it take 3 of to multiply to be 8? 2. All right, so that's, all, that's what roots do. They cut things down into parts multiplicatively. That sounds very much like what we do with squares and cubes when we go to factor them. We cut them up. So if I had this sitting somewhere, let's just do this, square root of x equals 5, and I wanted to solve this equation, now this is beyond what we're going to do in here, but I just want to do this and see if it irks you. It should feel like somebody scratching on a, can see the chalkboard, I missed my chart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to solve this equation, i say, well, uh, square root, I don't want the square root, let me just divide by it. Yay, I divided by that symbol. <laughs> That doesn't make a damn bit of sense, hopefully. Right? I, I can't do that. Right? Um, so if I had 5 times x, or 5 times x equals 10, and you say, okay, I don't want those parentheses. Let me divide by the parentheses. Yay. Did you got to start to follow? So that's one thing. Keep that in mind, that that does not make any sense. I can't just divide everything in the world away if I don't want it. Um, Here's the other thing. If, if I said, I said, let x be 2. Could you guys do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Simplify that if x were 2. Go ahead. I get some. Yeah, be careful. Don't forget the minus 7. It's not too bad, right? So if you, how do you do this? You just plug a 2 in. So 4 plus 8 minus 7. 5. Cool. That's not too bad, right? But if I want to do a bunch of this, let x be 2, get something. Let x be 7, get something. Let x be negative 8, get something. Let x be, oh, God. We got the table, but I want a more direct way to do this. So really, one method that's used, and this has other reasons for existing. But one way of doing this is to say, okay, I'm going to call this thing, and normally you just call it y. And what if I had another y equals x cubed minus 8x? And what if I had another y that was 8 over x? And what if I had another, I have all these freaking y's running around. How do I refer to, uh, you know, what's y when x is 2? You know, what's freaking y are you talking about? There's too many freaking y's. So one way we handle both of those problems is we call this, f of x. They all like, well, hey, that's, that sounds great, man. Uh -oh. So one immediate thing this does for me, and one immediate thing you cannot do, I cannot divide by f. That does not say f times x. That says f of x. Just like taking the square root of 9. It's not square root times 9. You can't divide the square root away. You guys semi good with me? So really, this is just a way of keeping track of what we did here. So to do this work, I would do this. If f of x is this, I want to replace x with 2. That means put a 2 everywhere I see x. Nice targeted, organized. I can see what I put in. I can see what I get out. So f of 2 would be 5, the work we just did, right? Say again? It's two problems. 
two problems. How do you mean? So they have to give me an input, right? And they have to give me something to input it into. Like this, this is number eight on the practice final, right? Yeah, it's the last one on the practice final. Exactly, cool. So number eight is the one that relates to this kind of stuff here. And notice what I can do. If you look at number eight on the practice final, I can have f of x be something, g of x be something, h of x be something. Anybody else need the practice final? Where he has that? Practice final, yeah. So number eight. I love it. There's no four in there either. So a should confuse you at the same time. So let's look at this real quick. So f of x is 2x minus 1. So what's f of 4? Yeah, don't let it be any more than that. That's all it is. Function notation is a way of keeping track of what you're putting in. So when I put something in, I put it in. I replace the x with that. No matter what the hell it is. If it's a 4, I put a 4 in there. If it's a w, I put a w in there. But then can you still solve it if it's a W, or is that it? Well, let's see. Let's do this one first. This is part A. So like you said, F of 4 would be 2 times 4, four minus one. 1. It's really that all. Remember the whole thing where we said like X times Y plus Z. Figure it out if X is 3, Y is 2, and just plugging stuff in. It's really just the next level of that, keeping track of what the hell you plugged in. So 2 times 4 minus 1, F of 4 would be... Is that like an 8 minus 1? Cool. And real quick also, what would one point be that this line goes through? See how that's a line? Zero. Based on our work, what is one point that I know this line goes through? Point has two parts to it. Four, comma, seven. It goes through the point four, seven. What's the parts of a point again? X, Y. So what was the X here? Four. four. I can see it right there. The input was four. The output was seven. seven. So see, that little expression right there it tells me the answer. It tells me what was put in. It tells me the complete point. Very useful. And it keeps it separate. This is the F function. This is the G function. If you have a cost function, you can make it the C function. If you have a profit function, that's the P function. If you have a current function, you actually make it the I function. Just because... But we'll leave that alone. How are we doing so far? Is that cool? That's all function notation really involves is a way to substitute. Tell what to, what to put in, and then you put it in. So when I would say, like, f of w, if you're cool with f of x being 2x minus 1, well, f of w would just be 2w minus 1. What does it say in the box? Does it say f and then 4? Yes, it does. Okay, so, so that would be your answer? F of W is 2W minus 1. Can you do anything? So that's it. Why? Why not? Now it's not. Now trust me, on at this level, I don't blame you at all. It's like you're just playing around with shit. But later, let me add a little thing in here. There's a whole region of mathematics. There's a whole um, process you can use in mathematics that actually simplifies things if you can replace the variable everywhere with something else. So it's sort of like, um, if I'm here and you're one foot away from me that way, can't I just move and change? Now, let me, let me get you guys to go with me. Let's say I'm at the origin. In fact, we're all at our own origin. Is that cool? Because then like you're so much over and up away from me and so forth. Well, if you're over there and I don't want you to be one away, I could just change my origin. I could just move my whole system over one. And now she's right there. You guys got it with me? So if I take uh, x and replace it with x, let's say, plus 1, that effectively moves my whole thing over by 1. It still semi-feels like just playing around, but it actually is kind of important. 
to know how that would affect. Sometimes making, a, making an adjustment like this would make this look better. And then I can work with it and then adjust it back. So what would this look like? What, what would I do with this? Yeah, it'd be twice x plus 1 minus 1. Is that cool? All I do, let me put it up here next to each other. Let me put it up here. This is like how you would work number C. Yeah, it's one step beyond number C. Or letter. I want to learn about number C. Eight. Can we do that next? Letter A, number C. <laughs> you guys are both. Well, we just did C. Is that what you're talking about? That's, oh, so that is, that's all of it. That's C. I thought you were continuing on. on. Is everybody semi cool <laughs> with C? So, right now, I was kind of addressing the uh, very reasonable comment that, you know, this is nice playing around, but I got stuff to do. Right? So I want to give one example of why it's important to know how to do this kind of thing. Um, so real quick, if f of x is 2x minus 1, f of x plus 1, you just replace x with x plus 1. Now how do you simplify that? Distribute. I love it. Wait, I thought that f... See again? Uh, there was like a four. Is that a whole different one? This is this is f. This is the function. It, it exists by itself. And we we know that back when we had just this, back when we did this, did we make a table of values? So what can change? My line can't change. My line is two x minus one, but I can change my inputs all day long. If I put a four in there, I'm going to get a seven out. That's what. Is that seven? That's what this work shows me. If I put a 4 in, I get a 7 out. Cool. Is that cool? But now I don't need the table. I've got all my information right here for me, plus I'm able to address F and G and H. I can have three different things going on. I can have 80 different things going on at once. Instead of they're all being Y, that would suck. They're all Y. What's Y when X is 7? Well, shit, i got like 80 of these things. Which one do you mean? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Whatever goes here replaces the X. That's all it is. All right, that's it. X marks the spot. You so you put just whatever's make the there. four up. You just pick the four. I just pick the four. Like, oh. if I make a table of values, can I just pick whatever the hell I want to? Yeah. And then down there, that's a whole separate one. So you pick the two. Yeah. So here I pick W. Right? I pick W to put in. So what does the function do? Twice the thing minus one. Twice whatever I put in. Minus 1. So what's f of w? Twice w minus 1. What's f of x plus 1? Twice x plus 1 minus 1. Okay. The function always does the same thing. It doubles it, and then it takes one away. It doubles it. Oh, okay. So what's f of Terry? <laughs> Twice Terry. That sounds awesome. Minus 1. Right? <laughs> one less than double the Terry. <laughs> Can we do anything with that? No. That's right, because Terry's not like terms with the so minus one. Only one of me, that's for sure. <laughs> they are not on speaking terms. Yes? Are you going to have the function on its own on the other side of the equation, or are you going to have to like move stuff around that? Like how we have to do it with factoring sometimes? It's, it's going to be, in fact, you, normally before you even call it F, you've done that work already. You kind of move stuff around to where you want it, and then you, and then you call it G, you call it H, you call it F. So they're always going to be given to me like, on this one, the practice final, the H is this. So I figured out that maybe this is my height function. I throw a ball and it goes like this. So now I've figured out what my ball looks like. You know, it's going to look like this. Is, is that cool? So maybe X is time and H is height. Yes, yeah, semi with it. So very often these things have physical meaning. H is height, C is cost, uh, W is weight. Whatever, so I can call it W of X, C of X. So what's H of 3? Yeah, 3 squared minus 1, which is? Yeah, 9 minus 1, 8. So what point would this go through, the only point I know so far? What point would this graph go through? 3, comma, 8. An input of 3. Output of eight. Yes, sir. Are you going to be asking for us to solve a function of 
No. Okay. Yeah, I think I know what you mean with no. Yes. You don't have to come up with your own function. Check, yeah. yeah, I was going to give you give it to you. That's sort of like what the other guy was asking. Uh, they're going to give us the function. We just work directly with it. Yeah. Uh, real quick, don't say anything out loud. What's uh, what's this here? put here? What do I do to it? Square it, subtract one, right? Very, the function is very single-minded. It says, I always do this shit to things. So when I put y minus two in, what's it going to do? It's going to square it and subtract one. That goes right there. Anything that's here replaces the x. So it's just like substitution of values, just like we did way long time ago. Put the values in. It's just a different way of telling you what to put in. What do you have to do with that side, though? Foil. I love it. Right? Y minus 2 times Y minus 2. So now you just clean it. Now it's just clean up. Do what you can. What do you get here? Minus 2y minus 2y, so minus 4y plus 4. If I put my middle terms together, is that cool? Sort of skip the step, but just put those middle terms together. And then, of course, you get y squared minus 4y plus 3. So that's h of y minus 2 is that. Yes, ma'am? How come there's no symbol between h and y minus 2? And, and this is one reason why I, I keep referring to this, because it's the only, and you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, so my grammar's bad, but square roots, radicals, we haven't really, we haven't talked about much of them uh, besides what I did earlier, but they're the only symbol I got that kind of acts like a function symbol does. Yep. Is anything going to signify that that function holds precedence, or is it just going to, I'm just going to find a problem with the letter next to the symbol? No, I, I, I that question's kind of weird to me. This is the H function. Yeah. Period. Uh -huh. and there's nothing to hold dominance over. This is what H is defined to be for this problem. Right? It might be different for another problem, but for this problem, H of X is defined to be this. There's no symbol here because I know this is no, no. H of X. Yeah. No, that's the function. Right? That's the function. But down on, on 3, on example, for example 2, right there, I have the H right in front of the line on the C. Yeah, so it's just saying, due to this, whatever... Well, were you okay with that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of. Kind of. I might feel inclined to multiply the h by the 3. Something. Exactly, that's what everybody thinks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not multiplication, we just have to remind ourselves. Yeah. It looks like it's multiplication. How do you know, is that what you were asking, kind of? Like, how yeah, do you know I mean, if it's, that's... Because, from the context of the problem. Yeah, it'll you say... Can, from the do? context of the problem, yeah. If I just said, I would never write this when I really meant that. Oh, yeah, that's you with me? Backwards. H times 3 is just funky as hell. That's semi getting mean. Okay, cool. And I could be mean if I really wanted to be. <laughs> yeah. I could be really mean. There's a lot of ways to make it just look weird as hell and be mean. But that's just stupid me. That's stupid me. That's 3 times H. This is H evaluated at 3. This is put a 3 into the H function. That's what that is kind of set aside to me. That's why when people, every now and again, I'll see somebody put like this. And I'll say, no, we always put that out front. And now you see why. So I don't confuse it, okay. possibly, with function stuff. Yeah. Um, in regards to those types of problems, there's like function F, G, whatever it is, aren't they always in the with that kind of problem? Yeah, I just put them in italics. It's a one extra way oh, okay. uh, that I am. It's just because the program that we use to create equations italicizes letters. If we tell it not to, it, you know, it won't get it. Yeah. So we got this here? Um, yeah. Sort of. 
Okay. So let me give you a problem. Shit. This is the situation you want problems. Because I ain't got a great. Uh, these problems out. There's five problems, and they all reference these three functions. There's like three equations to them. So how do you know which one to plug stuff into? Well, I tell you the name. The first one, I tell you, plug into G and negative 2. Oh, okay. cool. So I'll do the first one real quick. So I had a couple of really good questions. Do I put a negative 2 into all three of these? And it's not three problems. There are five problems, all referencing three equations. So how do I know where to put this negative two? Well, it tells me. And look at how this is. Look at how this, yeah. look at the symbol. Put the negative two into G. Isn't that what that looks oh, like? No, it's just where the X next to G is. Yeah. Put the negative two just the G. into oh. G. So what's G? Negative two. What's the G function? 2x squared minus 4. Right? And what do I want to make x now to do this problem? I want to put a negative 2 in there. So I want to make this. Twice x squared minus 4. What do I want to put in there? Negative 2. So I replace the x with what I replaced the x with. It's almost silly if you think about it. What did I replace the x with? Negative 2. So what will you replace the x with? <laughs> negative 2. You want to make it. So g of x is twice x squared minus 4. g of negative 2 is twice negative 2 squared minus 4. g of car is twice car squared minus 4. g of whatever. Whatever's there has got to be in there. And then you simplify that. So now order operations. Don't let that kick your ass. That should not be the hard part of this problem. Just to really make this point, it's on the practice final, so you know these problems will be on the final. These function problems. It's the last set of new stuff we're going to do. So it's every x that's in there. So like on h x. Oh, it's like just kidding. Never mind. I was thinking like HX isn't really part of the problem, it's just telling you what it is. Yeah, it's just this equaling. is just setting up yeah. what I can use. These are the yeah. problems. Right, this is what I use to answer these problems. 
That's the, that's the equation. This is what you yeah. plug it into. Okay. Those are the equations I can use. I was putting, I put H and then X in parentheses and I thought that second X is the 12. Right? Isn't that a 12? So for this guy, where do you want to put 12? Under the 6? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, Oh, you just do the same problem, but I'll look at different numbers. So it'll be 6 over 12. Yep. So on number 2, I want to use the h function. The h function is 6 over x. So h of 12 would be 6 over 12, which is 1 half. Good. Not 2. Can we have to simplify it or not necessarily? Well, that's it. That's as simplified as I can get. We have to simplify Whatever we put in there, we then simplify what we end up with if we can't. When I start throwing letters in there, I'm probably not going to be able to do it. Right? Yeah? So for now, we don't have to get a point. Like, we just have to get a point or just get Well, we always do. So I want you to realize these could be used as linear functions. Any of these lines, this one is a line. Believe it or not, it's 1 half x plus 1 half mx plus b. This is a line. So I could call this a, this is a linear function. I could find points. By do, I haven't done F yet, but I can find points by doing this one. I can find one point. Plug a 5 in, I get an output. I know it's 5, comma, whatever. That's one point. That is one use of function notation. Because I could have like eight lines I have to graph, and I can call them A of X, B of X, C of X, D of X, so I can keep it straight what the hell I'm doing. So you want the point as the answer or just the... No, you're right. Good question. No, I don't need the point as the answer. The answer here would just be, for example, here would be G of negative 2 equals, what do you guys get for this? Yeah, negative 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, minus 4 is 4. That's your answer right there. Can you go back to that number, please? G with G. Say again. Well, you got that, that value from... Uh, uh, do this. Order operation says do what first? Exponents. Exponents. Mm -hmm. Negative 2 squared is? 4. four. Times 2 eight. minus 4. Four. 4. Right, this is twice this. Well, that's 4, so twice 4 is 8. Subtract four is four. <laughs> Just do that. Do what it says. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So what about the third one there? How would that get set up? Five plus one over two. I love it. This will be f of x is x plus one over two. So f of five is five plus one over two. Good. Six over two, which is three. So f of five is three. If you wanted to, you could say... That line goes to the point five, comma three. But you don't have to. That's just me showing you another reason we have function notation. I can see points very quickly. Whatever the hell this g function looks like, and some of you should know that, that squared is going to look like what letter? U. A U. It's going to be a U shape. I know that U shape goes through the point negative two, comma four. So anytime I put something in and get something out that's a point that that graph would go through if I wanted to graph it. And I will not make you graph these. I just want to be just very nuts and bolts. Plug stuff in, get stuff out. Uh, what about number four? Here's where we hit our first weirdness. Let's just stay to t minus four. Yeah, if g of x is twice x squared minus four, g of d is twice d squared minus four. That's all just... Replace x with d. Now, again, I think part of the reason why it's confusing is like, like uh, your name just went right on my head. Like you said in the back, Alphonse, like you said, uh, that is kind of silly, and I agree with you. That has no, and out of context, what the hell? X and then D's and who cares? But one thing that's showing you is X is a dumb, it's called a dummy variable. I don't know if I've ever said that. Who cares what letter I use here? It's just a blank space holding a spot for the number I don't know yet, right? I can just replace it with numbers. So who cares which letter I use? But what if this represents um, at a certain depth the uh, gravity you feel? So I don't know if you know this, but if you go near mountains, if you're in between mountains, you actually weigh a little less because the mountain's pulling up on you a little bit. It's gravity's kind of pulling you away from the earth a little bit. 
you weigh about like point oh 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 one pound less. Ooh yay! Um, but if you dive down, you have a similar process happen. So maybe this is the gravitational pull you feel at a certain depth. I don't know. So x was stupid. I don't want x. I want d for depth. I want to make so so that's what my function would look like if I use a d input instead. So it's a really it's almost too basic of an idea to really hammer home. It shouldn't be that big of a deal to replace x with d. That's all we're doing. You use the name of the function with my code, the word we substitute the function with, for example, d instead of an x in the function, right? That's the only difference. That's the only difference. Okay. That's it. And it's just because I was using something that started with the letter d. It would just make more sense to keep track of things, right? d for depth. When I see d, I know it's depth. Uh, what about this last dude? Yeah, h is 6 over stuff. So what I got in there now is stuff is a minus 2. Can I simplify that? Nope. No. 6 divided by 2, no. Can't do that. I can't break into a subtraction problem, even though my minus is a little at a 45 degree angle for whatever reason. You can't break into there. <coughs> Hell no. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Don't make function notation more than it is. It's almost too easy to, to really get a hold of, but it's just replacing, just simple substitution. That's the most fundamental idea of function notation. All right. So a little bit more to talk about when functions. I wanted to go right for this, though, because this is the part that always gives people trouble. If you go into your 103, 110 class and you don't have much trouble with this, your teacher will cry little tears of joy. <laughs> but I always get people having trouble with this. They're trying to divide the F and all this kind of weird shit. No. What I always get is this, actually. I get right here. Somebody gets to this point, and I show you, and you're going to do it somewhere. And then they try to divide the negative 2 away. That doesn't make a damn bit of sense. That negative 2 is not a part of the equation. That negative 2 is what I plugged in to get 4. It's not like g times negative 2. You, it's just like a reference. I can't do, there isn't one more step to take. I know what g of negative 2 is. It's 4. I can't solve for g. g is not a number. g is a function. I stop there. Okay, good. So don't do that. That's the quickest way to make them cry tears of pain. <laughs> is to try to divide that and go further. What section is this? Like eight, uh, eight, it's 8-1. Eight, one. Eight. Eight, one. It's actually the second part of 8-1. So I'm going to go back now and talk about the first part. So that's function notation. Now a really good question would be, what the hell is a function, Jeff? So what? <laughs> Sorry. Remember Kelly? And her good handwriting? I was here about that. So, I want a function, really one way to look at a function is I want it to be something that makes physical sense. So if I said, draw me a picture of where the ball was after you threw it, that makes physical sense. Because that, you know, this is at time, so at time zero, it's right here, and then I threw it, and I threw it up a little bit, so at time three seconds, it was up in the air. You guys with me? And then I can see, well, when does it hit the ground? Somewhere over there. Is that cool? This would not make any damn physical sense. So at this time, where was the ball? It was here, and here, and here. And that's when you ask the guy that dropped the ball, trying to catch it in the outfield, well, how much did you drink this morning? <laughs> Coach, there were like three balls coming at me. I tried to catch the middle one. Are you guys, you guys with me? So what the hell is I got to do with anything? That means that for any input, my input on these questions was time. At time, three seconds. You better be able to tell me where the ball is. Don't tell me it's five feet up in the air and 20 feet up in the air. Sure. What the hell happened to the ball? You with me? So at any input, there cannot be more than one output. For any question I ask, the input, I can't have more than one answer. I can't have more than one output. So if I ask you, what size shoe? Are you wearing sandals? What size, you wearing sandals? What size shoe are you wearing on your left foot right now? You're not going to tell me, you know, 10 and 11. <laughs> so you got two shoes on your freaking foot? What do you mean? So it doesn't make physical sense to give me more than one answer to this. You guys with me? 
All right, so let's back that up and make that more technical, because it's still uh, just me having fun with throwing things. So here's the technical definition of function. So it's, it's a relation between two variables x and y. So it's going to be, or it could be time and so forth, but it's like between x and y. It's a relation between x and y where for every input, which we normally consider x, there can be only one. And has anybody ever watched Highlander? Have you ever heard of Highlander? There can be only one. So every time I talk about this, I think about that. For every input x, there can be only one. Output. One. And again, it's all because I want this to make physical sense. I can't come back on my, I can't say, where were you yesterday? Please pick me up. Where were you yesterday at 4 o'clock? I was at Starbucks and I was at the cleaners. <laughs> that's a little, that's not good. You know, you pick one, you should have been somewhere. Can't be at two places at once, unfortunately, for us. Um, so visually what that means, let me draw a few things for you. Which one of these are functions? <laughs> Which one is a function, or any of these a function? That's a little evil there on that second one. Right? What's the quick visual you could do? Why is this one not a function? Because back on itself, and really you can think a vertical line, if a vertical line goes through more than once, that would mean that that x, that x value has more than one output. If you draw any vertical line and it goes through more than once, does that make sense? So this one has a little evil with, it does kind of come back on itself, but let me make this a little clearer. So this one's fine. Any vertical line I draw goes through only once. That means every x has only one output. So this is not... A function, this is, this is yes, it's a function. This, so not a function, right? Yes, sir. So uh, the trajectory of a uh, uh, ground, when it goes downhill or goes, just goes further, it starts uh, dropping, right? Well, there's more variables, more than, than one, because there's elevation and weight, right? But if I keep track uh, time versus position, uh -huh. At a specific time, you cannot be in more than one place. Oh. I don't care how you're driving, right? Okay. And to be completely honest, my discussion about it making physical sense is a little bit too narrow of a discussion, but it makes it's pretty close to accurate. It depends on your variables, really. Is what I'm trying to say. Even the, the the speed of the of the wind will make a difference. It's going that way, but but the bottom line is you can only be in one place at one time. If you're in two places at one time, something bad has happened to you. Right? Yeah. That ball is in two places, somebody chopped that ball in half for some weird reason. Right? I've got Uma Thurman in my head, chopping baseballs or something. Um, okay, so what does this all mean? I could give you a problem like this, where I give you a picture of a graph, a, a, a function, and I say, um, not a function, but I give you a picture like this and say, is this a function or is it not a function? Why? And, and here's a beautiful thing. This is the actual name of this. You would say, not a function fails vertical line test. That's the actual name of it. I didn't make it up. It's the vertical line test. You draw a vertical line and it goes through more than once anywhere, not a function. That would mean at that one time, somebody was in more than one place. Just one horizontal line wouldn't apply, right? That would come in in the next class. There is a horizontal line test for a special kind of function. Mm -hmm. But to be a function, period, you have to pass the vertical line test. Uh -huh. So this bad boy here, not even a function. Do you have graphing in one channel, Oh, yeah, there's a lot more graphing in one channel. Oh. Yay! So vertical line is the most has to pass the vertical line test. The vertical line test. test. Okay. So tell me this. Um, here's another way to represent a relationship between x and y. Um,
So here's some points that a function, or that I, not a function, we don't know if it's a function yet. Here's some points that a relationship goes through. So these are all relationships between x and y, but this is a function. The other two are not. So this is some kind of relationship between x and y. This x has this y, this x has this y, and so forth. Can anybody figure out, would this be a function or not? Not a function. If you consider the basic definition, every input, every x, can have only one output. Mm -hmm. Are there any inputs three. that have, yes, three has an output of negative one, and it has an output of four. So that's like saying at three seconds, the ball is four feet up in the air and one foot down below the ground. But you could have three negative one, three negative one twice, and that would be okay? Because then you're still... really listing the same point twice. It's would... not a separate point. But it wouldn't be considered like it came back. Because at line? three, it's at negative one. So oh, if you right. say it twice, okay. you're just trying to make the point. Like the point, yeah. I guess, yeah. Well, you know that would it pass a vertical line test because you can't go over two, up seven, and then just over three, and then back one. That the points would be. I'm not saying what the order the these are connected in. Uh, I'm just saying that these are points that the line goes through. So the only reason I know this is not a function <laughs> is because three, the input three, has two outputs. Namely, negative 1 and 4. So you can't solve that graphing by just graphing. You could graph it. And you can see very quickly, if you graph it, you'll have one point there, 3, 4, and 3, negative 1, and you'll see it does not pass the vertical lines. But why waste time? What's the quick thing to do if I give it to you in this form? Do I see any numbers in the first spot that repeat? What about this one? Here's an evil one. I'm telling you up front, this is evil. Is that a function? Yes. yes. Yes, totally. One only goes to five. Three only goes to five. Four only goes to five. So this would be like if I put the baseball down there, or maybe there, five feet off the ground. A second later, it's five feet off the ground. Three seconds later, it's five feet off the ground. It's, that's, that makes physical sense. It's fine. It's fine to be a flat line. That's fine. But it couldn't be five all in the beginnings. Exactly. It can't be at five seconds. It can't be here and here and here and there. Always times, always x. Yes, the, every input can have only one output. The outputs can have as many inputs as they want. So see, if the output of five has what inputs? One and three and four and negative one, I don't care. That's they, fine. They don't have to be different either, right? They don't have to, no, definitely not. Not the second part, yeah. So that's, that's pretty much the complete idea of functions what they are and how their um, notation works. So that's section 8.1. And that's all I want to do. I don't want to do 8.2. Nope. So you only have to do through 8.1. Homer. Look at the faces. I like that. Like, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> so what I want to focus on the rest of the class is if you want to make uh, some test corrections, if you want to start working on that practice final. Um, I mean, either test back. So we got the test back. Well. Do you guys have any other like lessons that we're like? Is there still more to learn tomorrow? No. This is it. This is tomorrow. It. Tomorrow is completely devoted to review for the final. Yeah. This is the best for last. This was so easy. We have discussed. <laughs> we have discussed the last new idea. We don't have to just now. I was about to say we have learned the last new idea, but I don't know if you've learned this yet. We at least discussed it. Like that makes sense. So I wish I wouldn't watch through the wormhole though last night. They were talking about time. You ever watch that series? So that'll whether it really exists. That'll screw you up. The, all those weird well, there's a there's a there's a theory that we're we're actually a holographic projection. Yeah, that was what one of the people said. Like, that was like, yeah, I don't know if more, but one of them I think that was a string theory one. Where there's like,
membranes. Nine Ten dimensions. Yeah. yeah. Ten dimensions. Yeah. yeah. It was just freaking me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two dimensions We're at the point where we have. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, but the physics is there. The physics is pretty sure that there's 10 dimensions. Yeah, that's what they were saying. And those 10 dimensions explain uh, particles' mass, the particles' charge. Particle spin, particle magnetic uh, momentum, uh, magnetic. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Anyway, so they think that the way that the particle oscillates in all these different dimensions explains what its physical properties are. Like that string theory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're fine. If I give it back to you tomorrow, I'm not going to expect corrections. <laughs> So you you get credit for it being done. Yeah, you can make credit. Do you want to check this out? Oh, the first step on this one. What's the first step always? It's always your first step. GCF. Well, that'll make the number smaller because something does come out. But then remember, the basic idea is when the first number is out of one. You're going to multiply it by the last number. So if you take something out, it makes all your numbers a little smaller and easier to deal with. Yeah. Because I haven't returned them yet. That's all I mean.